If you follow a lot of skincare influencers on social media, then you've probably heard of hypochlorous acid being used in your skincare regimen. But should you be using it? Could you benefit from it? We're gonna talk about all of that today. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I wanted to dedicate a video to discussing hypochlorous acid because it's one of those skincare ingredients that's become a little bit more trendy and well-known over the last several years. But I find that a lot of people have a ton of questions about how to use it, when to use it, if they're a good candidate for use. And so I wanna delve a little bit more into that. When we think about what hypochlorous acid fundamentally is, it is a very weak or mild acid that has antimicrobial properties. And in fact, our own white blood cells, part of our immune system, create hypochlorous acid naturally in the body to help defend our body against pathogens like viruses and bacteria. It's kind of a unique molecule because it can be used as a disinfectant, it can also be used in skincare, and it can be used in medical devices to help with things like wound healing. Hypochlorous acid has probably gained the most traction for or its antimicrobial abilities, its ability to help kill bacteria, as well as fungi and viruses, depending on what concentrations it's used at. And in skincare, it can really be used to purify and cleanse the skin. For example, I use hypochlorous acid in my practice as a dermatologist every day to prep my patient's skin for procedures. So if I'm gonna be doing injectables like Botox or fillers, or if I'm doing some type of invasive procedure like microneedling or lasering, I will use hypochlorous acid to cleanse and prepare the skin to reduce the risk of infection. Something that's kind of interesting is hypochlorous acid was discovered back in the 1800s and was even reported to be used for wound cleaning in World War I, but it's really only been used in medical practices and as a medical device since 2016. Hypochlorous acid has also been touted for its anti-inflammatory properties. So for people who struggle with inflammatory skin disorders like acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, there is some data to suggest that it may be helpful in improving things like visible redness, as well as itch and irritation associated with those conditions. You can kind of think of it like a very gentle cleanser for the skin or even like a sanitizer for the skin. I wouldn't use it in the place of a cleanser, for example, but for people who may have an atypical burden of bacteria on their skin, for example, people who suffer from eczema or atopic dermatitis often have overgrowth of certain bacterial populations on their skin, using hypochlorous acid may help reduce that irregular bacterial burden and help the skin heal better. One thing you may have heard is that hypochlorous acid is just very dilute bleach. And in some ways I want to say that's true, but in some ways it's not. So one of the things that really determines how hypochlorous acid exists in a formula is the pH or the acidity level that it exists at. When you have a lower pH, something between three and six, most of the molecules that you have in your solution are going to be in that hypochlorous acid form. But as you raise the pH, more of those molecules will want to dissociate and become bleach. So how the product is created, how it's stored, what pH it's at, these are all things that are going to determine whether or not you're dealing with hypochlorous acid or dilute bleach. That being said, dilute bleach is not a bad thing. For example, in dermatology, we've been using things like bleach baths, where we take a quarter to a half cup of bleach and put it in a tub of bath water to help kids who deal with things like eczema. And similarly, that is working through an antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory pathway. Now, hypochlorous acid can vary in terms of concentration. So it can be a lower concentration, like 0.005%, all the way up to 0.02%. And generally that is considered a very safe range for hypochlorous acid to exist at and to be used in skincare without causing irritation or damage to other structures on the skin. So in summary, using hypochlorous acid on your skin can reduce the bacterial bio burden as well as cleanse and purify the skin. It can also help calm inflammation, which in turn can help with visible signs of redness as well as may improve itch. As a dermatologist, I first started recommending hypochlorous acid after going to a conference where a very esteemed speaker spoke about how he had used hypochlorous acid to help his patients who had rosacea. And I very distinctly remember him saying in his talk, listen, when we look at the data that's out there for hypochlorous acid, it's kind of underwhelming. So there's not a ton of studies on it, but what he said in his clinical experience was that people who suffered from inflammatory skin conditions seemed to see improvement with hypochlorous acid when they couldn't tolerate other products. And I kind of remember tucking that little pearl away because so much of dermatology and just medicine in general is sort of this balance of looking at the data, but then also looking at how that really incorporates into real world applications. And since then I have been recommending hypochlorous acid 
consulted to my patients who struggle with these low-grade inflammatory skin conditions, and so many people have benefited. I have had patients ask me directly if hypochlorous acid is good if you are acne prone, or does it help with breakouts? And it has not been studied in that capacity, and I don't wanna make medical claims for hypochlorous acid regarding acne specifically. But one part of acne is having this buildup of bacteria on the skin. So if you are regularly cleansing your skin, whether that's with hypochlorous acid or something else, it may help reduce breakouts. And hypochlorous acid is not going to be a skincare product for everyone, but it is quite gentle. So if someone is interested in incorporating it into their routine, I think they can do so very safely. I think of it as a really nice option for people to try if they deal with something like acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis. They just have sort of low grade redness, irritation or inflammation in their skin. And maybe they're already on prescription treatments, but they're looking for something to kind of boost what they are already doing. I also find it can be beneficial for people who don't have a diagnosed skin condition, but might describe their skin as sensitive. And they want something that might just help soothe or calm their skin throughout the day. And in my practice, I have seen hypochlorous acid used for so many different things. I've had so many people message me and tell me how they use hypochlorous acid in their routine. So I'll just kind of explain how I've seen it used, which is one for cleansing things. So if someone has like a wound or a cut and they want to clean it, but they don't want to use something like alcohol and definitely not hydrogen peroxide, using something like hypochlorous acid can be a more gentle way to do this. For example, I have my patients after they've had CO2 laser, so aggressive laser resurfacing, cleanse their face with either vinegar soaks or hypochlorous acid afterward to reduce the risk of infection. I've also seen it used to take care of piercings as well as tattoos. So anything where there is a break in the skin, hypochlorous acid is generally considered safe for application. Many of my ophthalmology colleagues, so eye doctors, recommend hypochlorous acid to reduce the risk of blepharitis, so inflammation along the eyelid margin, as well as for people who have chronic recurrence of styes in the eye. If you struggle with something like blepharitis, you should of course talk with your eye doctor, but my best friend's an ophthalmologist and she talks about how she has patients kind of sprayed on their hands usually and then kind of like massage it around their eyes a couple of times a day. You can spray it directly onto your eyes and most hypochlorous acid has been proven safe for eye use. You just want to check with the specific formula that you are using, but rather than spray something directly onto your eyes, I think it's easier to either spray it on clean fingertips or onto a cotton pad so you can gently wipe it over those areas. Now, if you do decide to incorporate hypochlorous acid into your routine, I think there's a lot of different ways you can do it. It's typically recommended to be used as a daily thing if you're using it to calm inflammation or irritation. So I think it works best when applied in the morning. I would recommend washing your face if that's something that's part of your morning routine, doing a spritz of your hypochlorous acid, and then letting everything dry before you proceed with the rest of your routine. And yes, you can actually apply things onto damp hypochlorous acid, for example, hydrating serums or your moisturizer or your sun screen. The one thing you need to be careful about is if you're using an antioxidant. Because hypochlorous acid has efficacy by oxidizing bacteria and other pathogens on the skin, you don't want it to oxidize your antioxidant. So you wanna make sure it's totally dry so that it's not interfering with that type of skincare ingredient. And the same thing goes with using hypochlorous acid and retinoids. Retinoids are very unstable molecules. You don't wanna mix hypochlorous acid directly with them. But again, if your hypochlorous acid has fully dried down, it no longer has that oxidizing capability and so you're safe to layer other skincare on top of it. Now, if you have been using your hypochlorous acid acid spray and then directly applying your vitamin C, you're not doing yourself any harm. It's not like that's creating a dangerous product on your skin, but you may be decreasing the efficacy of your antioxidant that way. Now, some people, myself included, like to use hypochlorous acid during the day. So I wear a mask at work still when I'm seeing patients. And I find that if I am not using something to cleanse my skin throughout the day, I notice a lot of congestion on my lower face. So I like to give myself like a midday spritz with hypochlorous acid. And I notice that really decreases the congestion and breakouts that I see. And I'm not worried about how that's interacting with my skincare because I've put my vitamin C on early in the morning and it's already absorbed and doing its thing before my hypochlorous acid is going on my face. Hypochlorous acid is also amazing to have in like your gym bag, for example. So if you notice that you get body breakouts, that can be due to not washing directly after the gym. But a lot of us, myself included, don't always go directly to the shower, like without passing go. So I really like to use that as a way to sort of cleanse the skin, I like it in the armpits too, because it can help with odor. And if you have someone like a teenager in your house or even yourself where you kind of need something to spritz yourself down with after a workout because you're not jumping into the shower right away, hypochlorous acid is a really nice option. And one other thing that's great about hypochlorous acid is that it's not going to bleach your clothing. So not only is it super gentle on your skin, it's super gentle on your clothes. Now, of course, you gotta know like what hypochlorous acid should you use on your skin. So we can talk about that next. You can't get super fancy with hypochlorous acid. These formulas are not going to vary a ton between each other. and the 
reason for that is hypochlorous acid is very unstable. And so there are specific ways you have to process it so that you can maintain the pH and maintain the efficacy of the product without adding too many other things. One of the most popular hypochlorous acid brands is by Tower 28, their SOS spray. I think this is really what put hypochlorous acid on the map when it comes to using it in skincare. And the reason hypochlorous acid gained so much traction outside of a dermatology office, for example, is because people were seeing these immense benefits in their skin with regular use. Because I'm such a fan of hypochlorous acid and I've seen so many of my own patients benefit from it over the years, it was really important to me that when I created my own skincare brand, Prequel, that we had a hypochlorous acid product as well. So the Prequel version of hypochlorous acid is called Universal Skin Solution to denote how universal it can really be. And I really love the spray mechanism on this. So one issue I have found with hypochlorous acid sprays in the past is you don't get like a nice fine mist when you spray. It's more of like a squirt. And so I really find that this has a beautiful application on the skin. I do want to make it very clear that the Tower 28 hypochlorous acid, as well as the one from Prequel, are not considered drugs. They are really cosmetics. So we really think of them as calming, soothing, purifying the skin, but they are not treatments or cures for things like acne or rosacea. I got to know, have you tried hypochlorous acid? What has your experience been? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,